The problem of electronic waste or e-waste in the Philippines is very much linked to the country's garbage problem. In Metro Manila, 6,700 tons of waste is generated every day by its residents. Only 720 tons is either recycled or composted. The remaining 6,000 tons are either dumped in the city's dump sites, dumped illegally on private lands, rivers, creeks, or openly burned. Household and other industrial waste are often mixed and in the end arrive at the same destination. Locally generated and foreign e-wastes. Foreign e-wastes come in two categories. Wastes that are sent directly to Manila as wastes and wastes that are mixed with regular or second-hand goods. One of the more prevalent types of electronic goods coming into the Philippines are televisions, or TVs, and other appliances from Japan and South Korea. According to a study commissioned by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, 55% of surplus TVs come from Japan, 42% from South Korea, while the remaining 2.3% comes from Taiwan, the United States, and Australia. According to the same study, completely defective items could be as high as 30% per shipment. Based on the interviews conducted by BAN, the figure is higher. It goes all the way up to 50% per shipment. Merchants refurbish the waste with parts from other broken TVs in the shipment. Parts that are unusable are sold to junk collectors or mangangalakal, who then sell it to junk shops or dump together with normal waste. The latter is often the case for CRTs. They separate it. They burn it. Interviews reveal that a majority of what is collected goes to a central collection point north of Metro Manila. It is then shipped to China by Chinese traders. These, however, are unverified at this time. E-waste recycling has its hazards, more so if done improperly. Well, dun sa mga problema, uh, pagsapit pag ng gabi, Meron diyang mga misa nangangamoy kuryente, mga nagsusunog ng mga kuryente na ibinebenta sa junk shop. At yan ay halos araw-araw meron dito pagkagabi. Interviews with other local officials confirm that wire burning and e-waste dumping is a widespread problem. Often the case, it also impacts the community that live around or near the dump sites. This is Dreamland, located in Rosario, Cavite, an hour's drive south of Manila. Dreamland is a community that is situated adjacent to the dump site where the town and the electronics industries located inside the export processing zones used to send their wastes. I started in the year 2000. But in 1997, I started in the basura here, but there are not many of them. In Sari Sari, there are many yung mga nagagaling kung saan-saan lugar. Meron din po nagagaling sa EPSA. Noong panahon noon ng, ng year 2000, ay tinatayong nalada kung dumating dito ang basura eh. Nagkaroon po kami dito ng mga epidemia, sakit, um, halos maraming namatay ng mga bata, matanda, diarrhea, gastroenteritis, hika, ubo, sipon, lagnat. Pangkaraniwan po mga 5 years old, 1, 2, 3, ganyan. Basta't mga bata po pangkaraniwan. Mga Hindi na po. Meron kong kaming area na nalaman noon na ang sabi na eh, pero sa ngayon wala na ho akong pandinig na tuloy-tuloy doon. What happened in Dreamland also happened to a place called Paradise Heights, or more popularly known as Smoky Mountain. E-waste leaves in its wake a trail of harm. If you visit a dump, you'll immediately see massive quantities of plastics and other wastes. And if you dig a little deeper, the vestiges of e-waste in these dumps still remain. The e-waste crisis is a global one, as foreign wastes continue to travel to other ports in the name of free trade. Developing countries such as the Philippines are overwhelmed by local and foreign wastes, 
There is only so much local governments can do. Effective international intervention in the form of toxic waste trade bans are needed. Without effective international action to stem e-waste and toxic waste trade, communities such as Dreamland and Paradise Heights will only multiply. The solutions are not easy, but the complexity of the problem should not be used as an excuse for inaction.